Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Oh boy. Yeah, this is gonna probably upset a few people, but this is coming from my experience. As you well know, there are Epson printers and there are Canon printers and everybody has their preference. Most people, and I state this simply from experience from the interaction that I get from all the members of my channel as well as my Facebook group. Only a small percentage of you all are using your printers for selling. In other words, generating photographs, prints, whatever the business may be, you are generating prints for money and you're doing this on a daily basis. Meaning, those printers that you own are being utilized daily. Maybe not on the weekends, but at least Monday through Friday, you're constantly printing. Now, many people complain about certain printers, especially the Pro 1000. But if you complain about the Pro 1000, try the Pro 1. It makes the Pro 1000 look like the thriftiest printer in the world. The Pro 1 is an ink hog. It robs your ink, literally. Again, because you don't print on it as you're supposed to. These are more in the production level. So these printers have to be used pretty much daily, constantly, in order for that ink that you are using to be mostly used for the production of prints. Now you may ask, well, let me, let me just say this to you, Jose. I'm an amateur photographer, and I have thousands of images, but I don't really want to produce a lot of prints. Well, then in that case, don't buy a Pro 1000 or a Pro 1. Buy something like what I have back here. ET, EcoTank, 8550, Thrifty. Inks are very low cost. Dye inks, very brilliant results on your common papers. Yes, it falls flat on certain papers, but 90% of the media that I have run through it works perfectly well. Now, you want pigment, okay, fine. So you get yourself, say your, your limit of width is 17 inches. You're not ever going to print anything larger than 17 inch wide by whatever. So you may consider the P900 from Epson, 17 inch printer has a roll adapter you can buy as a side accessory makes that printer actually quite quite good you have 10 colors no more black ink switch valve again never have to worry about this problem with that switch valve and again never having to worry about the black ink switch valve ever failing which happens on printers such as the r3000 pro 3800, 3880, all of these printers that had that automatic, so-called automatic black ink switch valve, they would eventually fail because most people didn't want to use them too often, fearing that you were wasting ink every time you made a switch from black matte to a photo black. Well, regardless, the P900, we're going to stick with 17-inch printers at this point. The P900 no longer has that problem, and they have actually basically created a brand new print head, 10 channels, no black channel is shared. Each black ink has its own channel among eight more colors as well. And so now you have also a expanded color palette. It has violet ink, which is more toward the true blue region of the spectrum, which increases that area where printers just kind of fall down flat. They just cannot reproduce those colors very well. So this really puts it above anything else in that category. Now, if you are a seldom user, that printer will probably be a good one for you because, hey, that print head is Teflon coated. It's not going to really clog that often uh, unless you really let it sit for months and months. But say you're a weekly printer, 
fine. It's not going to run a pre-print diagnostic cycle like the Canon printers do. It's just going to go ahead and print. Sometimes, however, it will do that when it is absolutely necessary. So don't be fooled into thinking Epson printers will not run a pre-print cleaning cycle. They will do that. My P800 definitely will do that. Okay, so the chances that your prints will be fine are pretty high, especially if you run a pre-print nozzle check. You should be able to see whether that printer is ready to be used for a, an important job, let's just say. Now let's talk about the Pro 1000, which is what everybody is complaining about. Let me tell you something about that printer. It has 12 colors. It has a built-in densitometer. And why do you need that? It's to bring that printer to factory specifications. Uh, Epson's printers in that category of 17 inch do not have that. So when you buy P900s, a huge batch of P900s are basically manufactured. A few are tested. And so what you buy lives within a narrow margin of error for output. As long as it's within that margin of error, it's fine. They call it calibrated. Well, in reality, it is not. For the super exact person who, you know, demands the finest output of color accuracy, yeah, you have to calibrate that printer. The Pro 1000 is able to be internally calibrated. So that's a plus. That is a huge feature that you would never dream a printer in that price category to have, okay? Now, what else does it offer for you? Well, it has an agitation cycle. Remember, these are stationary cartridges. On the P900, I believe that the only internal compartments that hold ink are situated inside the printhead. We call those dampers. And so they hold a small volume of ink. As the printhead is moving, it agitates that ink internally. The ink in the ink lines is also agitated because those ink lines are constantly flexing back and forth. But the cartridges themselves, they just sit. Now, the Pro 1000 has a secondary set of compartments that holds a certain amount of ink, and that ink is agitated by an agitating cycle. There are little pistons. I don't know how they do that. But literally, it moves the ink around inside that compartment. So when it reaches the print hit, it is now suspended, if it ever settles at all. Okay? We don't know whether it does that or not. These OEM inks are fabulous. They have perfect neutral buoyancy for those pigment particles. Now, let's talk about how to use a printer such as the Pro 1000 effectively, economically effectively. You got to get through your head that it's not a printer that you think you're not going to be using a lot of ink. Of course you are. They are meant for production work. This is not a Pro 100 that you can print only once a week. Let me give you a scenario. If I print once a week and say I make an 11 by 14 and it needs a couple of ml of total ink to be able to produce that print. Well, if I wait a whole week, it's very likely it's going to run a pre-print maintenance cycle. And it's going to use probably more ink than would have been used to produce that print. Get it? So let's just say you need 2 ml of ink to produce that whole 11 by 14. But prior to printing that 11 by 14, it has to run a maintenance cycle because you didn't use it for a week. And you might say, you might ask, well, maybe the printhead didn't need it. Uh, too bad. It's going to do it anyway because it wants to ensure that your print is perfect. So it will run that cycle that may use 3 to 4 ml of ink total. Well, now you just wasted more ink than it would have been used to create that 11 by 14 masterpiece. Right? You see what I'm getting at? So here's the deal. If I use that printer in the mode it is intended for, that is production daily, you will not have that problem. You will no longer have that problem because, yes, you will be using ink, and that's just too bad. That's what it's meant for. 
That car is meant to be driven, not sitting idling in the driveway or garage, God forbid. So you need to use that Pro 1000. If you are in business and you're producing prints, say you are a wedding photographer, a commercial photographer, and people actually want prints, I hope that's the case this day and age. Prints are wonderful things to hold. I hate digital. I like prints. So I am producing prints for sale. So let's just stick with this 11 by 14 scenario going on here. Let's just say that my 11 by 14 paper, it's a good paper, it cost me a dollar. So that's one dollar already cost-wise. I sent an image to it with whatever tool I choose to print with, and the printer requires, say, 3 ml. Let's just be generous here. It's a dense image, so it requires 3 milliliters of ink. Well, the Pro 1000 ink cost is actually 75 cents per milliliter. When you load 12 brand new cartridges, you've already primed the printer. And let's just say, for the sake of this discussion, you load 12 brand new cartridges. Those cartridges have 80 milliliters of ink each. Times 12, that is 960, I got it over here, ml of ink. So you will use, say, 3 ml. That is 75 cents per ml. So 75 times 3 times 2 is $1.50 times three is two dollars and 25 cents i believe right add a dollar to that that's three dollars and 25 cents but you're selling it for twenty dollars do the math folks you're making quite a good profit from that 11 by 14. that is assuming of course you printed it and it's perfect the first time around okay but here's the deal say you got another 10 prints to make Okay, and if you have Q image, you just load all of them, all the images at once. Press print. Make sure you have enough paper loaded. It will print those other nine prints, one after the other, without doing what? A cleaning cycle. So you have actually used, let's just say that you didn't print for a few days and it didn't run a cleaning cycle. Well, that first print came out in the red. In other words, you used up more ink cleaning and prepping the printhead for the up and coming job. Let's just say Monday morning, you begin to print. You haven't printed all weekend. Monday morning, your first print is gonna be preceded by a cleaning cycle. The next nine prints, nothing. It will just print. Now, it may do a slight cleaning cycle and that is necessary due to the fact that canon printers and many other non-epson printers use thermal printheads they have to literally heat the ink and that can produce a residue that can build up in your printhead and that has to be flushed out periodically it will sense that it literally knows hey I'm getting a little scummy around here. Let me flush myself out. So it will run maybe on print number six or seven, a short cleaning cycle. A couple of ml of ink will be wasted. So at the end of this 10 print job, let's see, times three, that would be 30 ml of ink used, and then maybe five ml total waste ink generated. That's a pretty good ratio. That is six to one almost, right? Yeah, better than more ink wasted than you produce one single print every week. You don't want that. So if you are not in business, if you are not, even if you're a hobbyist, if you're not going to be printing daily, then yeah, it's going to use up ink because it has to, it's designed to clean itself, to be ready to go for you. So when your print begins to, the real image begins to print, it's almost guaranteed it's going to be perfect. Assuming, of course, your color management is also perfect. We got to keep that in mind as well. So let me show you something that you can access in Red River's paper site. 
that will give you an idea what a print costs to produce on certain printers. Let's go ahead and jump over to the screen. All right, so since we're talking about the Pro 1000, let's go ahead and look at this particular printer's cost per print. And so a four by six, this is not counting ink that is generated, waste ink that is, that is generated on a pre-print cleaning cycle or maintenance cycle. Once you get going, you can print four by sixes at 22 cents each worth of ink. So it will cost you 22 cents of ink per four by six. The same thing goes for five by seven, 32 cents, eight by 10 will cost you about 72 cents. So that's almost, if you think about this, it's 75 cents per ml. So the eight by 10 at 72 cents per print, that's like one total ml of ink being used. This is of course been averaged, okay? It's not exact because images have certain ink needs. A low key image will require more total ink than a very high key image. You know, a little baby all pastel in a light background that will require a lot less ink. That's something, you know, a cat in a dark room. Uh, you know, they always used to say the black cat in a coal mine, you know, that will require a lot more ink. But this is kind of an average across the board amount. So 11 by 14 is what we're talking about. So a buck 40. I said a buck fifty. So let's just call it a buck forty uh, average. In other words, if you were to print a standard image, and this is what they're doing, they're using a standard image to produce these prints, and they do you know many, 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 and then they weigh the cartridges. They know exactly what they used to weigh prior to the test, and then they know exactly what they weigh after the test, and so they can get a pretty good idea what a standard image, which is basically the most evenly distributed set of tones you can imagine this on your histogram will be across the board even if you open that image up in your editor that's what you will see so even a 13 by 19 will cost you just two bucks and 25 cents let's just narrow it down to that so that's not bad at all so again as you can see if i was printing 10 13 by 19s at 225 each plus a dollar fifty per print and I'm selling them for say thirty dollars I'm still making pretty good money so the statement that was made that the pro 1000 will not be a profitable printer for business you guys are totally wrong I'm sorry I have to disagree with that statement you can make it profitable and in fact even more profitable as you guys know I'm refilling my cartridges mostly with OEM inks. I get my OEM inks from larger cartridges, so my cost per milliliter is even less. Let me tell you how low I pay for every ml of OEM ink. Let me go ahead and do that very quickly here. 700 ml, I pay $220 per cartridge. I have a link in my descriptions for that and divide by 700 and my total cost per ml is a very big number let me show you that it's kind of funny let's just call that 31 cents or 31 and a half cents but that's what it comes out to so even cheaper than 75 cents per ml so as you can see really making statements such as those you, you are totally wrong you can indeed use that family of printers and make a profit. In fact, make a darn good profit. Because, like I said, even if I had, say, a 2100, which is a 24-inch capacity printer, I could buy the 700 ml cartridges for 220 each. I'm making money daily. You have to be. Otherwise, this is not going to work. You're making money daily. 31 whatever it was cents per ml so a photograph whatever the size that requires 2 ml of ink to print completely that is global will cost you what what was it 62 cents something like that to print plus the cost of the paper and then you sell it for 20 dollars that's a pretty good profit margin i don't know of anything that's better than that if you ask me you know so yeah don't don't be so cruel against the pro 1000 
it is not for everyone it is not for the casual user of course it will run you to the poorhouse if that is the type of habit that you have of printing only once a month it's going to kill you it, it, yeah, that's a fact it is meant for daily printing production printing and for those who are generating money or if you're crazy enough like me to have a youtube channel dedicated for printing yeah that's the only that's the only reason i would have one and that's why i have one that is it all right that's enough for now i hope anyone didn't get too angry at me but these are the facts i have been playing around with these printers for over 20 years now and i have figured out ways to get the most out of them save as much money as possible get the highest level of quality that i can extract from a printer and still be able to print okay still be able to print that's the whole the whole goal of this whole channel of mine to allow you to enjoy your printing and see your images finally all of those glorious images that you have edited on your screen that you cannot take everywhere with you on a piece of gorgeous photo paper all right that is it for now don't forget to subscribe share and like enough always happy printing everyone bye bye